Hello and welcome to another Creative Coding video. In this video we're going to look again at the new idea of functions which we introduced last time but this time we're going to take a much simpler example, a much simpler bit of code just to make sure that the new idea sinks in and we get comfortable with it. Last time we were working with quite an interesting bit of code which drew a flower and lots of flowers and that might have been too much um, for, for, for us if we were very new to this idea of functions. So today we're going to keep the code very simple and focus on gently introducing this idea of functions. Okay, so I'm logged into open processing as usual. I've got the simple instruction set up in the setup section as usual. I've made sure that my simple JS library here is enabled and then we're ready to go. That's what we always do when we set up our code and if you're unfamiliar with that have a look at the uh, first couple of videos where we explain that. Okay so what we'll do is we'll start writing code um, from this empty empty skeleton as it were and build up to this idea of functions so we are taken towards this new idea very sort of gradually and gently. Okay, so let's um, let's draw a circle. It couldn't get simpler than that really. So draw a circle at the center of the screen, which is at 400, 300. And let's say it's got a size of, I don't know, um, 50. And let's draw another circle at the same place, but it's smaller. If we run that code, we should get two circles being drawn, one overlapping the other. Nothing particularly new here. We've done circles many times before. There you go. Now, we can think of this as something that looks like a button, perhaps. Um, it doesn't look really like a flower. I'd say it looks more like a button. If I use color, I can perhaps make it more like a button. We use the fill instruction. Let's say that the bigger one is orange and the smaller one is yellow, just to try some colours. There we go, that, that almost looks like a button, I'm, I'm sure we can spend time picking different colours. Okay, that's that's fine. Um, in, the, in previous um, videos we also looked at this idea of randomness and getting our computer to pick um, a number uh, rather than us having to choose one and then we can use that random number to place our shapes, our circles at different places, at random places on the on the canvas. Um, we've covered this a couple of times before so if you're not familiar do go and have a look at those videos. So we're creating a new variable x and it's going to be a random number between 0 and 800. I'm going to create another one, random number between 0 and 600. So 800 is the width of the canvas and 600 is the height. So looking at it again, the computer will pick a random number between 0 and 800 and pop it in X. And then it'll pick a random number between 0 and 600 and pop it in Y. So every time we use X and Y, those numbers are used. I don't know what they'll be because they're random. So let's run this code just to check it's doing what we expect it to do. What do we expect it to do? X and Y are random. Those circles are going to be drawn at a, at a random place on the canvas. Yep. Run it again. It's a different place. And the circles are still centered on the same place. They're kind of um, over each other because we're using the same location, x, y, for both of them. Great. Okay. Now, we can sort of say to ourselves, well, wouldn't it be nice if we had more than one button on the screen? Um, let's have two. How could we do that? 
well, one approach might be to copy and paste all that code. Copy it and repeat it just like that. There you go. That might work. Let's try it. Yep, it does work. But it's actually not very satisfactory to, to do that. We're repeating code and that's always um, considered a little bit uh, inefficient and not very elegant. There are much better ways of repeating code. Um, what we did previously was we said, this code we've written is actually quite useful. Um, it draws a button. I quite like buttons and I'd like to use that code again and again. Why don't I take all this code and create a reusable recipe out of it, um, a bit of code which is wrapped in a way um, so that I can call on it a few times, many times. And that's what a function is. It's a way of packaging up code so that you can call it by its name. So let's call our code my button. You could call it something else, but a descriptive name is always helpful. So we're going to call it my button. And I'm just going to paste all that code that we had before. So it's exactly the same code we developed. But in this time, we've put it inside a function called my button. So we've wrapped it up inside a new thing called a function. And its name is my button. Now you might be noticing there's some similarities here. That's a function with a name and that's a function with a name. We've not really talked about it before, but there are lots of functions <laughs> in our code that we haven't really um, focused on. Um, setup is a function actually. Um, it just so happens to be called when our code starts for the first time. And draw is a function that is run when, when the computer is is ready to start drawing. Um, let's look around. Yep. Okay. Well, we'll come back. Okay. So if we run this code, what happens? Let's try it. Hmm. Nothing's happened. Should we run it again? And again? Nothing's happened. That's because our drawing instructions must go inside draw. It's empty at the moment. There's nothing there. So if it's n empty, no drawing is happening. Previously, we might have used a circle instruction or a square or something like that. Um, now we're going to call our function. We're going to say, I want to use all that good code, that really useful code that I wrote before. And we call it by its name, my button. That's it. And let's run that. Yep, it's drawn a button. If I run it again, it's somewhere else on the canvas. And that's because the position of those circles is chosen at random. So let's just recap what's happening here. We wrote some useful code for drawing a button. We've wrapped it up, given it a name call my button. And now we can call on that function, call on that code just by using its name. It's called calling a function or invoking a function. And it's, instead of copying and pasting all that code to draw two buttons, all we now need to do is call it by its name twice. The first time all this is run. And the second time, all this is run. Let's try it. Yep. Two buttons. Fantastic. I'm trying to get them not to go off the edge. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Great. And the nice thing about this is I can have four buttons really easily. I just call my button four times. Instead of copying and pasting all this code four times, all I need to do 
is say my button four times. There you go, four buttons. Great. So what we've seen is one of the benefits of using functions we can package up useful code and reuse it really easily, simply and concisely by calling its name, just like we've done. Easy peasy, nice and neat. There are other benefits, and one of those is that all our code that describes our button is in one place, it's just here inside the function, inside the definition. And if we change it, if we say, I don't know, I'm going to improve um, the, the, um, the button by changing the colour, and let's say we think purple is better than orange, um, all we need to do is just change the definition once, not four times, not everywhere that the button is drawn, just in this definition. And that means that whenever the code is called, the function is called, the benefits of this improvement take take place. So let's run that and see. There you go. Those buttons have now become purple. So you can see that there's some benefits there, particularly as our code grows and we get much bigger code, which becomes perhaps a bit more complicated. If we can say that the definition of a thing we're working on, whether it's a face or a flower or a button or a car or another kind of pattern, if it's always contained in these neat packages called functions, all we need to do to improve those things is change the code once and anyone, and it might not be us, it might be somebody else, who makes use of that function can benefit really automatically and quite neatly um, from, from, from improvements that are made in one place. So you can see there's some benefits in maintaining and actually just retaining your sanity, really. Um, let's, let's kind of paint the opposite picture and say, if we didn't have uh, functions like this and we were using this code um, four times here and other people were, were drawing buttons and they were having their own version of this code copied and pasted, if I changed my code and changed orange to purple, um, that will improve things for me. But I might have missed out um, um, a, a, um, a button drawing code somewhere else in my long program um, because I didn't keep it all in one place. So there's a, there's, there's a disadvantage to me. And if somebody else is using buttons as well, they might not know that I've improved the definition and they won't benefit. So that's that's um, slightly abstract, but uh, an important um, important benefit. I hope this video has shown what a function is, how we create one, how we use one, and some of the benefits with a much simpler example. Um, I know the last time we were drawing flowers and we had code that was much more involved. We've just got two circles here, which, which, which makes a, a button. Um, I hope that's um, been um, useful and I hope um, you go away and write your own functions and have a go at using them. Um, next time we'll take this idea even further, um, but in the meantime, do do really go and have a have a go and practice yourselves. Okay, see you next time. Bye.